So Paul, we have you know all of this data we're measuring from these objects in space, but I mean the colors of light sometimes are pretty subtle, way more than you can actually make out with a human eye. Yeah, I mean we really only see three different wavelengths of light, and that, by combining those three wavelengths of light, you can see a range of colors, uh, just like you take three ingredients in your kitchen and cook up a range of meals. But you, but won't, it's, you it's won't have the three full... ingredients. <laughs> yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so a few years ago. I was thinking about this, and it, the trouble is, all this richness of data we want to has to get into yes. the human brain so we can understand it, which means it has to be converted into some form that we can see or hear or taste or touch or something like that to use our senses. And given that our senses are so limited, how do we do this? And it occurred to me that maybe normally we think of spectra as lines. We mm -hmm. see them with our eye, wiggly lines on a piece of paper. Yeah, but we're but used to these little plots with these lines going up and down. But it occurred to me that maybe the eyes weren't the right sense to use it by because in fact the ear is much better at picking up differences in wavelength. Yeah you can really hear those very subtle cues and different sounds. I can't notice uh, you know one line next to each other is this dark red or a slightly darker version of red but you can hear tones. Quite yeah well. we don't just hear three different wavelengths of yep. sound we hear thousands. I mean if you do a note a semitone apart like la and La, la, la. I mean, you hear the difference. That's a very small difference in wavelength or frequency, but you couldn't see that small difference with yeah. your eyes. So a few years ago, I did an experiment working with a student here to try and take some of these spectra and mm -hmm. convert them from light into sound. So how, well, well, how, so how do you just convert light into sound? Well, we take the data as measured by a spectrograph, which yep. tells us the wavelengths or the frequencies of the light and then you synthesize the same wavelengths and frequencies only with sound. And so you use essentially the, the scale of the wavelengths and their intensities per wavelength, but just change it to something our ears can pick up. That's right. So turning it from light to sound, so you have the same waves, only they become sound waves rather than light waves. Mm -hmm. We also have to change the wavelength because the typical wavelengths of light are you can't hear. That's right. They're much shorter, which is why we see them. Yeah. So what I actually did was I remember this hydrogen jumping from level two to one yep. transition. Um, sorry, level three to two, the high H alpha. I converted that to the note middle C. Okay. Now we use that because obviously that's one of the base elements that we see in pretty much lots of spectra. So it's kind of our good base level of normalization. And we know that middle C from its name is about the middle of the human yep. range. So it seemed like a good thing to split it to. So things could either go redder and higher? Yep, so if, if it was a, a redder colour, that means a longer wavelength of light, yep. which would also mean a longer wavelength of sound, which means a deeper pitch. That's right, okay. Because longer wavelength means lower frequency. High wavelength means high frequency. And those would be the bluer colours, the things to the left of yep. that transition. Of so hydrogen. any spectral feature down the blue of our spectrum will give you a high pitch note, yep. and everything down the red end will give you a low pitch note. Okay. So the first thing I did was I took the spectrum of the sun, and let me play this one for you. Kind of humming along there, kind of just... Yep. Now, if you remember, the sun was covered a range of frequencies. Yeah. So what you've got is a range of wavelengths, a range of frequencies, and that gives it some noise mm. type. But it, was, but it was fairly you know, this droning kind of sound with a little bit of noise over the top. It's not, not a musical noise. Yeah. Um, I was wondering about whether you'd be able to hear absorption lines. You'd be able to hear that certain wave frequencies are missing or wavelengths right, are missing. Which has a lot of. But right. I tried it in practice, so I couldn't hear the difference. Yeah, okay. Maybe they're just too narrow. And that's, okay. Um, you know, I wonder, like, like a tooth missing or something, you'd feel the absence. <laughs> it didn't actually work. I mean, that was the sun, so okay. about 6,000 degrees. Let's try a cool star. Now, this is from we know because it has a different black body, it has that different color, and therefore it is cooler than our sun. So for the spectrum would be more at the red, the longer That's wavelengths, right. which means it's going to be more of the lower pitch. Now, I should warn you, if you're listening at home, you might need big speakers to hear this because okay. it's going to have a lot of low frequencies. If you've got little tinny earphones, you might not be able to hear it. So get, put in the biggest speakers you have. To listen Crank to it up. Okay, so here's what a cool star sounds like. Quieter in the sun. Once again, it's a noise, not yeah. musical, it's a noise thing. Um, but, and whether it's quiet in the sun depends on how good your speakers are, that's these right. low frequencies, but it's definitely a lower pitch compared that's to the exactly, sun. Exactly, that's right. And if we take a hot star, so now we're going to have 
Uh, it's still going to be noise because it's still covering a range of frequencies, but now it's going to be much more the high pitch noise. That's right, because it's that bluer color. Yes. Feels really static -y, like you kind of left the TV on. Yeah, this is more like what people often call white noise. Yep. Uh, that, that's a noise of the particular noise spectrum, mm. where there's more high frequency noise compared to low frequency noise. Well, those are all a bit disappointing because they weren't very nice. But how about, I mean, can't hear absorption line spectrum, but how about an emission line spectrum? So something that has a lot of very bright features that has very strong uh, emissions of certain types yeah, of Yeah, so a spectrum like this. Yep. So it's got the emission line peaks, so there's only particular wavelengths. Let's try playing that. In particular, I took a spectrum of this, which is the uh, the Veil Nebula Vela, yep. which is a supernova remnant, something <laughs> close but to that I love personally. And if we play this, it's quite different. It almost sounds like bells. It does. So now we're now it's sounding musical. Yep. That's because we've got a lot of power at particular wavelengths, but not the other ones. And so the, those powers of the particular wavelengths are essentially drowning out that noise. And it does sound like bells, because most musical instruments, they have frequencies of integer ratios. You might get the fundamental yep. frequency and then double it and three times it and four fifths it, which are the normal chords in music. But this, because the, the ratios of the different lines of oxygen and hydrogen and so on don't fit in nice ratios, it sounds like... The, there are actually only two instruments that have all these harmonics that aren't nice regular things. One is bells. Okay. So it sounds like bells. The other one is a bagpipe. And I'm kind of glad it doesn't sound like a bagpipe. <laughs> that would be a very different experience, let's say, Paul. Yes. In fact, you can hear in that there's a sort of warbling noise. It's actually because the there are two oxygen lines close to each other. Yep. And okay. they're so close that the waves start off in sync, but slowly get out of sync and then slowly come back into ah, sync. It's what's okay. called a beat frequency. And, and for that's the oxygen doublet that we famously call it in astronomy. Yes, so we hear a sort of woo 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 from that. If we try a different, um, this is the uh, a supernova remnant, yes. uh, not a supernova remnant, a planetary, planetary nebula, so yes. a star dying. We'll talk more about those later. So again, it sounds different than that last nebula that we just looked at. In this case, it's more like dominated by a low frequency note, which is the hydrogen line, which is dominating this whole thing. And so that's what most of the color we also kind of see in this. Uh, nebula as well. Yeah, it's the red colour around the outside yep. here. If you took a spectrum in the middle where you're getting the blue from, in this case, oxygen, you'd get a more like the sound we heard from the Vela. Yep. And finally, let's play you something different close to my heart, which is a spectrum of a quasar. So this is now the gas, uh, um, a quasar is when you get uh, gas swirling down the throat of a giant black hole, and the ultraviolet light from this goes out and zaps the gas swirling around it. Now the spectra look very different from these nebula. Yes, here's what a spectrum of a quasar looks like, and what you can see is that the lines don't go all at one way, but they're a bit broadened yeah, out. Right. What's actually happening is some of the gas is moving towards you and some is moving away from you at very fast. In this case, it can be 10, 20, 30,000 kilometers a second. And that shifts the wavelength because of the Doppler effect. So it gives you a, it's still emission lines, but the emission lines are a bit broader. And if you listen to the sound of that, it gives you sort of a grumbling sound. It does, right. H higher pitch, but you can hear these distinct... Yeah, yeah, yeah. It feels like you're almost on a wave a little bit. And what's happening is the different parts of these broad lines are interfering with each other and giving you the sort yeah, Sometimes okay. it gets a bit louder and a bit quieter. So that was my research project. Do you think this would ever catch on? I mean, look, I think there's, there, there's interesting in some cases, right? It's you can hear things in a way that maybe you can't visualize or fully appreciate. If we're just trying to show the spectrum of an object, it just looks like noise anyways. But, you know, there's also ways of people different feel and sense things. Yes, yeah, so I was kind of hoping it might be a useful way to explain spectra for the general public. I think it's too complicated to do that. I mean, because, like, for instance, the hot and the cold and the sun star, we didn't really hear that much other than just louder and quieter noise. So I think it makes the point that we've got this really rich data coming in from space. It's hard to handle with our eyes and in some ways better than the ears. It's a different way to think about things. But I had to conclude there's a way of explaining this to the general public. It probably was a failure. Mm. But it still shows why we have to use different ways of analyzing and interpreting the data when we're actually doing the science of these objects. Absolutely.